Hey, Hefe323 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own bucket server and how to add a few key plugins. I've created a folder here on the desktop called Bucket, and this is where we're going to be storing all of our files. So we're going to head on over to bucket.org to download craftbucket.jar. Normally you'll see a box over here on the sidebar linking to their Jenkins and recommended builds, but since their site is currently down, we're going to click this link here and download the latest recommended build from this link. And save it in our bucket folder. Wait for the download to finish. Alright, there we are. Next we're going to create our batch file, which will start the server. So new text document. We'll save it as run.bat. Like so, yes. Right click, edit with Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++, you can edit it with a program like Notepad or WordPad though I highly suggest you get Notepad++. Now we're going to head on over to the Bucket Wiki, to the Setting Up a Server page. There will be a link down in the description section. And we're going to head on over to the Windows subsection and copy and paste this section since we're using Java 6. If you're not on a Windows system, there's also uh, startup scripts for Linux, Mac, or if you're running Java 7 instead of 6, you can find Java 7 scripts. We're going to copy and paste, save. I should also note that you need to make sure this file name here, craftbucket -1.1 r3.jar, matches the file name here, which it does. You can also change the how much RAM your server starts with by modifying this value. Defaults to starting up with uh, one gigabyte, it changes to two, one point five, etc. If you're going to be using anything over one point five gigabytes, make sure you're using the sixty four bit version of Java. Save, close that, and then we'll run the batch file to start the server for the first time. The first time you see you start the server, you'll see these warning messages. Uh, you shouldn't be concerned as that's just the server generating the necessary files. All right, it's running now, so let's hop on to our client and connect using localhost. And there we are. Hello. All right, so we'll get off here. Stop the server using the stop command in console. Stop. Alright. Now let's head on over to server.properties. This is the file which contains all the uh, settings for your server. Most of these are pretty self explanatory. If you have any questions on what each setting does, there's a really good page on the Minecraft wiki and I'll put the link down in the description section. All right, so we're not going to change any of these settings for the purposes of this tutorial, so we're just going to close it. Now we're going to start adding our plugins. The first one we're going to use is our permissions plugin. For this tutorial we're going to be using Permissions EX, which is my personal favorite. These links will also be down in the description section. I'm going to hit the download link here. And this is the version we want to get, 1.18. If you're watching the video and there's a later version, I recommend using that one. I'm going to hit the download button again and then save this to the plugins folder. Save. Head on over here and open the zip file. What's this? And then we're going to extract these four uh, .jar files 
to our permissions or into our plugins folder. Like so. Close this. And we can delete the zip file since we don't need it anymore. Okay. We'll run the server once to generate the necessary files from the plugin. And then stop it. Stop command. Now we're going to go through and configure each of these plugins. The first one is Chat Manager. This allows uh, you to display prefixes, suffixes, groups in chat. It's disabled by default, so we're going to enable it by setting this value to true. You can also uh, change how the suffix and prefix player, how it's all shown, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to leave them at the defaults. Next is Modify World. This is also disabled by default, so we're going to change this to true. Modify World is a plugin that allows a server operator to choose who can do what at a group level or even at an individual level. It's a very powerful plugin. I highly recommend it. I'm going to save that, leave everything else default for now. Lastly, we're going to head on over here to the permissions.ex file or folder and open up permissions.yaml. This is a bare bones version of a permissions file. Before we get started, I should also note that most bucket plugin configuration files are saved in a format known as YAML, which can be very picky about formatting, and you aren't allowed to use tabs. So to get around this, at least in Notepad++, you can ch uh, change the settings. So one tab is changed to four spaces. So we'll head on over here to Settings, Preferences, Language Menu, Tab Settings tab. And you're going to check this box here, Replace by Space. Make sure this is set to four. Close that. This is the default group. This setting here, default, true means that this is the group that first-time players will join. So we're going to first set a prefix for this group so it shows up nice and fancy in chat like so. Prefix, colon, space, single quote. To add a color you first use the ampersand symbol which is on the 7 key and we're going to choose green I think which is two. There's a list here. Also put a link to this in the description, description section. We're going to call this group guest in game, like so. And I want the username to be white, so I'm going to put ampersand F, which is white, like so. Now I'm going to modify the permissions. This permission node right here modify world dot asterisk means that this group can use all of the permission nodes in the modify world which we don't want since this group will mainly be for people looking at the server guests so we don't want them to be able to build to break to pvp to do really anything except chat and walk so we're going to set the following permission nodes modify world dot chat modify world dot sprint and that's it for this group for now that these two nodes will allow the a member of the guest group to be able to chat using the global public chat no uh, private chat and to be able to sprint they can also walk around going to create our second group now. We'll call this group member. This is a group for people who have applied to join the server and have been accepted. So they'll be a little less restricted when it comes to building, breaking, etc. I'm going to set default to false as we don't want first time members to join this group. Set the prefix. 
uh, I'm thinking this group should be a nice shade of teal or light blue, which will be ampersand B. Call this group member. The name will also be white, like the guest group. Like so we'll set inheritance from the default group. What inheritance means is that any permission nodes specified in the default group will automatically be set for the uh, member group. And set some permissions. Since this is a more trusted group, we'll allow them to build, destroy, interact, PvP, etc. with modify world dot asterisk. And we'll set the admin group default false prefix. I'm thinking a light red, more of a rosy color, which is ampersand C. I'll run admin set F for a white name, the player name that is, and permission. We'll give them every permission node. Uh, if you're going to give a group this permission node, you don't need to set inheritance. Uh, let's set some users. I'll put myself in first. Make myself an admin. And then we'll add in another person. Some other guy. We'll make him a member. Alright, we'll save that. And let's check to make sure it works. Start the server. Looks like it started all right. Localhost. Hello. There we are in the admin group. Disconnect. Stop. Like so. All right, and now just to show you some more permission nodes and two more fairly some plugins. I'm going to add command book and world edit. Uh, world edit is necessary for a command book to work unfortunately. So we're going to download this first. Download. Save here in the plugins folder. We only need these two. Uh, this folder in this uh, .jar, these other ones aren't really necessary. Just text, documents, and information. There, we'll delete the zip since we don't need it anymore. And then we'll download command book. Download, save here, open it, and the only file we need from here is the command book.jar. Extract that to our plugins folder, like so, and then delete the zip file. Run the server once to generate files. And we're done. We'll stop. And then we'll modify our permissions file to give these groups a little bit more. I want the default group to be able to check the rules, message of the day, uh, use the slash spawn command, and be able to set away. So first one is spawn, so it's command book dot spawn. And then command book dot away to be able to use the slash afk command. Command book dot who to be able to see who is on the server right now. To be able to see the message of the day. And to check the rules. I want the member group here to be able to set home. So command book dot home dot set and command book dot home dot teleport. And I also want this group to be able to private message each other, so I'm gonna set command book dot message. And the admin group already has all permission nodes, so I don't need to set any set anything for them. I'll close this and run it to make sure everything's working fine. And it is. Alright, so if you have any further questions about how to set up 
a bucket server, how to download and install plugins, or how to configure them, you can head on over to the Minecraft forums or the bucket forums. I'll put links to both in the description section.